And you know I wear my heart on my sleeve You get in all the reads Pack your shit like you finna leave I go and hide your keys Put you in position to win Bless you without a sneeze Bust you down in on the VV Then we was getting cheap Overplay my part, I can't breathe I feel the pain in my lungs I thought we really was one My heart call it straight up Play my part, I can't breathe. I feel the pain in my lungs. I thought we really was one. My heart cold as hell. She And you know I wear my heart on my sleeve You get in all the reads Pack your shit like you finna leave I go and hide your keys Put you in position to win Bless you without a sneeze Bust you down in on the VV Then we was getting cheap Overplay my part, I can't breathe I feel the pain in my lungs I thought we really was one My heart call it straight up Play my part, I can't breathe. I feel the pain in my lungs. I thought we really was one. My heart call it straight up. What's good, gang? Your boy in the building, man. Demond in the building. What's up? What's up, baby? We talk Hawks TV. We talk Hawks daily. Had to come tap in with y'all, man. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to tell y'all like this, man. Them reports starting to come out. Them reports are starting to come out, man. Got some Hawk fans kind of scared. Got some Hawks fans kind of nervous. Well, you know, I don't give, you know, I don't care. But some Hawks fans out here, they is scared. They is nervous of what they seen. Uh-oh, let me see if I can pull it up for you real quick. What's got Hawks Twitter and Hawks fans jumping today? Oh, y'all see this right here? Y'all see that? Hawks likely to trade star hawks likely to trade star atlanta expected to move trey young or dejounte murray this off season uh oh uh oh man listen Listen, listen, listen. Hey, man. I ain't even go front, bro. Some of these fans, bro, they are nervous right now, bro. They are so scared. You know how I know they scared? <laughs> bro, I'm on Twitter. I'm not even saying nothing. All I'm saying is, okay. Listen, all I said was, I said, okay. I can see, I can I can see what's going on. I can see why they're looking 
at both options. That's all I said, bro. I ain't listen. And these cats getting on me, man. They like Demond. Demond, if you trade, trade, you gotta rebuild. We not trade a trade. Woo, rah, 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 rah. I'm like, man, are we for real right now, bro? <laughs> I'm like, bro, are we serious? Hold up, man. Let's pull up the article. I'm gonna pull up the article. And uh we're gonna read, we're gonna go over the article real quick. I'm not gonna take up too much of y'all time, family. Cause I'm supposed to be at work. I'm using my little, I'm using my little lunch break right now. I'm using my little lunch break right now to report the news. You know, y'all know usually I don't even do stuff like this. Hold up. Let me let me put this out here. Hold up one second, man. Hold up one second. Um <laughs> Okay, let's pull up the article. Let's pull up the article here. I want to go to the article. Let me see here. I want to pull up the exact article. It's on Bleacher Report, ain't it? Yeah, it's on Bleacher Report. Let me go to Bleacher Report real quick, gang. Because I want to read the article, right? I want to read it. Because the article, when I read the article, I mean, when you can sit back, right, and look at the team without any bias, no bias, right, just sit back and look, then some of the stuff, there go, some of it, it makes sense. Some of it makes sense, right? But listen, man. I know a lot of the, I know cats ain't trying to hear that shit. <laughs> Let me see. Can y'all see? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. And like I said, guys, I'm not gonna take up too much of your time tonight. I mean, today, I should say. So NBA rumors. Trey Young or DeJounte Murray likely to be traded by the Hawks in the offseason. Right? So who reported this? Mark Stein. Let's read the article, guys. Let's see. Let me make it bigger so y'all can see. Uh, let me make it bigger so y'all can see. But, man, some of these people, they is highly upset, bro. Okay. Now, let's go over this, man. So, it says, while the Atlanta Hawks are currently focused on – oh, let me drop this link. Jesse, for the fans, if the fans want to tap in, come tap in to me. There go the link right there. Come tap in. Come tap in. Now, it says this. While the Atlanta Hawks are currently focused on trying to pass the Chicago Bulls for the ninth seed to host a playing tournament game, the future of the backcourt duo going into this summer is uncertain. According to NBA insider Mark Stein. Mark Stein. So the first thing is, do we consider Mark Stein a good source? I believe he's a good source, right? Hey, can y'all can y'all hear my fan blowing in the background? Let me know if, if y'all can hear it. I'll cut it off. According to NBA insider Mark Stein, the Hawks are likely, okay, likely is the key word here, <laughs> likely. The Hawks are likely to trade either Trey Young or DeJounte Murray. What does that mean to me? To me, that means they are undecided. They, To me, the Hawks are likely to trade. To me, that means they're not 100% so on trading either or. Once again, here's the link. I dropped it. Here's the link again. Once again, that's the link. They are likely, let me bring my boy Leon on. 
aka show, aka this nigga got about 50 million names. Yeah. Uh, so there have been rumblings that either Young or Murray would be dealt during the offseason. Okay, let's continue. Stein reported in February that one person equated with Atlanta's dynamics said the team knows it has to trade one or the other. Now, that was in February. It was once assumed Murray would be the player traded by the Hawks. Assumed. Key words, man. Key words. But Young's finger injury that has kept him out since February 23rd gave them an opportunity to evaluate how they play since his absence. The Hawks have gone 12 and 10 in 22 games while Young has been sidelined. Murray is averaging 25 on 45% shooting, 37 from three, nine assists, five boards since February 25th. Prior to Young's injury, the Hawks were 24 and 32 in their first 56 games. They might get one more opportunity to evaluate how their backcourt duo looks together before the end of the season. The team announced on Monday that Young has cleared the practice. Y'all know Trey stats. Murray, Murray's four-year $114 million contract extension signed last July kicks in next season. He's owed $24 million next year. Young will make $43 million next year and has two more seasons guaranteed on his contract along with the early ter termination option. We're 49 and 26-27. Atlanta has already clinched a playing berth. Okay, so let's discuss. Let's discuss. Now, looking at the team, right, without your fan goggles on, without your play favorite player goggles on, when you're looking at it, does the – does the article make sense? Okay. I think lean on over there, burn, burning sage. Does, does the article, does it make sense? Number one. Okay. Think about it. If you are, if you are a part of the Hawks front office, does the article make sense? In my opinion, it does make sense. Right. Because they probably did say, you know what? When, when Trey go, when Trey went out, the front office is like, okay, well, guess what? Let's see what we got. Now, let me say this. I'm not saying the front office was like, let's see uh, how good we do. I believe the front office probably was like, okay, let, let's see what we got going forward. We get a chance to play the young guys. Whoop -de -whoop 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 -whoop. Nobody thought, included, okay? That we was gonna play five hundred. I ain't think we would play five hundred basketball. I ain't gonna lie to you, cause y'all heard me when we go over that schedule. I thought we was gonna go over on the uh West Coast trip. I think playing tw going twelve and ten opened the eyes of people in the front office. I don't know who, but I believe it opened people's eyes to get to get them thinking. What if we do A or what if we do B? What are the pros? What are the cons? Right now, when you look at it from a money standpoint, uh, you probably your favorite DJ from the money side because he's giving you. Now, I'm assuming if he can, can maintain this 25, 9 and 5 over a whole season he's giving you that at 27 million dollars you're not finding that nowhere else you're not getting that type of re return on investment right there okay at 27 million next year at 28 million so money wise and we know as show like to call him we know big tone he like to save money if possible but speaking of the money does Murray generate the same type of money that Trey Young does, even though we are not winning games? Okay? Because that's another aspect of the money side that we know Big Tone like. He like them jersey sales. He like uh, them, them season tickets being sold. Let's be honest. Okay? I'm going to keep it real. 
Fans don't come to see DeJounte Murray. I mean, some of them may switch now, but before Trey got hurt, fans didn't line up and say, hey, I want to go to Hawks and see Murray play. It was, I want to go see Trey Young. Okay. Now, we can talk. Now, we can, let's move on to production. Murray is showing you he can give you similar production to what Trey has given you this year. Now, obviously, we can go back and forth on, well, Murray's did this shit at the end of the season against lesser opponents. Woo, 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 woo. And you could probably make a you could probably make a valid argument with that. But you can also make an argument that he showed up against a better. He showed up. He also showed up against better teams. Right. Now, what do we do know? I think. 90% of the fan base agrees. Okay, because I know it's a couple out there. Shout out to homeboy Shamar. Do I believe Murray is a better point guard than Trey Young? I don't believe that. Okay. I'm just talking about just point guard, making passes, see the vision. We all know Trey Young is an elite playmaker. That's a no brain. That's Trey Young. Yeah. Murray's not even close to that. Right now, does Trey Young elite playmaker has that equal to wins this year? That's the because at the end of the day, correct me if I'm wrong. That's what it really boils down to when we, when we talk about players. The player they doing all this offensively, all this defensively, whatever they good at. Does, does it equal wins? Does it show on the score sheet? You know what I'm saying. Now, before I move on to the homeboy show, y'all already know my, my stand, and I've never wavered. I'll trade anybody if the offer is right. I will trade. I, I'm all about the return on, on, on what I'm trading. What's my return? I'll trade any. I'll trade Murray and won't care. I'll trade Trey and won't care. Now, I will say this before I go to show. If you trade Trey, now, the organization, they may get ready to take some heat because every sports network going to get on this organization ass pause talking about you gave up Luca Dantage for Trey Young and then your trade move on from Trey. You, this organization is awful. They better get ready. They better get ready for that. If you trade a Trey Young, I'm going to tell you that now. I'm going to tell you now. Now, let me let's see what the homie show got to say, man. What's good, my guy? What what's what's what, what's your th thoughts on the Hawks? Uh, even entertaining, even entertaining, a tra uh, a Trey Young move. I love a good bait and switch. You know, sometimes you just gotta you just gotta hit him with that. Because <laughs> look, okay, let's 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 play out the timeline, right? Okay, let's we know that they we know for a fact that they at least listen to DJ trades pre deadline. Facts. They may or may not have liked what they heard, but they didn't trade them. Facts. Okay. Now, if I want to increase the value I can get back, here's the thing. Here's the thing. One of the reasons I feel that DJ's value was so low is because everybody's like, well, I mean. They know they got to get off DJ because they're going to build around Trey and Jalen, right? Right. But if I tell if I tell teams, fuck it, I don't know which point guard I want, that drives up the price of both of them. Facts. Okay. So that's what I think the Hawks are trying to do. But obviously, I am on the – if you if you follow me on Twitter, <laughs> you know that I am a Brandon Ingram to the Hawks aficionado. None of that other shit. Just take DJ and OO. I'm sorry, OO. I love you, but you ain't gonna stop me from getting Brandon Ingram. I'm sorry. Um, you know, and it, and it and and there have been talk that Quinn doesn't like Trey and he likes DJ more. If that's true, then that is what it is. And you know, the the organization is gonna do what it's gonna do. Um, the East is so decrepit <laughs> that if you can get the right return for Trey Young and Jalen Johnson becomes a 23, 10, and 5 guy. And those pieces that, that you got in the Trey Young trade, you know, 
fit your roster and they can, you know, actually make then you can you can make some noise if you do that Trey Young trade. For me, if I know, I know, <laughs> and I know that Trey and two wings will get the job done. Trey and Brandon Ingram seamless fit on offense, similar. See, the thing about DJ and Trey is DJ's mode like changed his game to mm-hmm. on offense to be a better fit offensively with Trey. The defensive fit is always going to be what it is. And it's not DeJounte's fault. It's not DeJounte's fault that he's a point guard. It's, they're both point guards. Right. You're just not going to be able to play good defense today where every team's got like a six, seven, two who's 220 pounds. Like DJ's just not going to be able to guard that guy. Right. Like, right. and you'll say, oh, well, he shut down. And that's because Ant plays, he just scores over containment. He doesn't, like, he's much like DJ. He doesn't care if you try to contain him. I'm going to score anyways. Right. But, like, the guard, the guards, the guards are wings, like Jalen Brown. They're going to feast on him because he's, he's too little. Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell plays with speed and force. He just feasts on him because he, even though DJ's 6'5, Donovan Mitchell kills DJ. Every time, like going back to their days when they were both in the in the Western Conference. So, you know, I understand the predicament the Hawks are in, but I think the best part is you you can go to every team that needs a point guard and say, okay, I got two. What you want for this one? What 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 you what you gonna give me for this one? And that kind of discourse raises the price on both so that they can get a more informed decision on what they should do. That's just my opinion though. Oh yeah, the Carter track two. Go DJ. That's my DJ. Murder 101. I'm the hottest nigga under the sun. That's for y'all. <laughs> New Orleans, by the way. That's new- Now I will say this. I will say this now. And this will be this will have to be me giving Landry Fields and them credit. Now, we do know, right? We Organizations, front offices, agents use these same reporters to link information to develop to get leverage. We do know that happens. I don't do I think Landry Fields are the type of dude that go that route? No. Now, I'm not saying he didn't, because it, it would be a smart move. It would be a smart move to do that. Because what what do we know? Okay, we all we all know it's gonna cost you a lot more to get a Trey Young than it is to get a Dejounte Murray, right? We know we know that already. My thing, my my one of my questions is, and this is something I probably never know unless y'all already know. Maybe a report came out I didn't see it. I would like I wish I could know what what the type of offers that Atlanta received, not Atlanta calling anybody. I'm talking about that they received from other teams for Murph. Because I think we could probably agree, um, and I don't think this is too much for Murray, especially after seeing what we see now. I don't think an established player and two first-round picks, uh, and I talk about no, no, no. Uh, they could obviously they're probably going to be lottery protected. I could deal with that. Uh, I think two first round picks and a a, a decent player. You're probably not going to get an all star return. That's all I was asking for pre nah, but not, not 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 Grimes though. Not not that guy, bro. Not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. I mean, nah. yeah, I was talking about. Uh, I mean, you talk about like a a good starter. And two yeah. solid firsts. I will say this: firsts. is this is this uh, is this asking too too much? When I when I say I need to at least get a starter, whether they starting for the other team or they're gonna come start for us in return for DJ, I think that's reasonable, right? The guy giving you twenty five and twenty five and nine. He's shown, depending on what team you go to, he can give you that, and that's going to be a bargain deal for the next four years, whoever gets him. What well, the next three, because I think the fourth is a player option, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's reasonable to get a starter. Now, obviously, 
Uh, you're looking at, and I'm gonna go off what you was putting out. We looking at you're looking at a New Orleans or what uh Matt looking at, which I don't think is gonna happen. He looking at a cat, and and I, I don't know if Murray gets you Ingram because this was my thinking show. The same way you thinking that BI does all this for for the Pelicans. I don't think they would just give that up for Double O and Murray. Because I think they, they probably see the same thing you see, right? Hey, this guy is, uh, what'd you say, the only wing averaging six assists in the league. You say he's a playmaker. He can do all this. So putting myself, and you know they GM is a greedy cat. So putting myself in David Griffin's shoes, I'm like, this is one of my core guys that is going to take a ransom. Now, I'm just saying that because that's what I would project to other, other teams, right? Even though in my head I could be like, I'm getting rid of this dude for whatever reason. In my head, I'm, my projection, y'all y'all going to think he's one of my core guys. So I don't know if Murray and O gets you, gets you a B.I., you think you think you we would have to add in picks or maybe we had to throw in an AJ Griffin? And if so, would you would, would you do that to get him? Here's my thing. I here like you can present what you want to other teams. Right. Like you said, GMs talk, agents talk, some owners talk. So you know that we know, like they know in New Orleans, like we know in Atlanta, Tony Wrestler are a cheap bastard. We know that. Right. Mm -hmm. They know that about their owner, too. He's due for money next season, right? So they they get, they going to have to get off one of these big contracts if they don't want to be at the second apron. Because you know Zion's getting bit. He's he's already on his um real, his first real contract. Right. They got to, like, it's kind of, it's similar to the situation with the Nets, where I was like, okay, we need to trade DJ to one of these wing-heavy teams that need guards that can feed all these wings similar to the Pelicans who have Zion and Brandon Ingram. And on the bench, they have Trey Murphy and like guys like Jordan Hawkins, who's kind of like a wing, but not a forward and who's coming up. And um, EJ Liddell, who I really like at Ohio State, who had an injury his rookie year. So they have guys coming up, but say what you want about CJ McCollum. CJ McCollum is an off guard, right? He's an off guard. He's not a point. And while Brandon Ingram is a really good playmaker, He's not, he's not, how do I say, like Brandon Ingram's ability to create for others is predicated fully off his ability to score and what he gets, like the attention he gets because of his ability to score. DJ is a point guard who gets his team into their actions, mm -hmm. right? And that's what they need more consistently so they don't have to add Zion or BI to do that all the time. When you have a guard, like somebody – you know, head of the snake in your starting five or whatever lineup you're going to put together. Because, like, in, in the playoffs, we say this every time. Like, we say with the Celtics, these teams that constantly have their wings initiate, when it's time to go get the chicken, late in games, they fall off because they don't have a guard who can get them into stuff consistently. And they'll find out in the playoffs this year that that's what they're going to need and that's what they're going to be missing. Right? Yeah. And you can – because you can, you can wing initiate to death all you want to but when it when push comes to shove of you most of the time that doesn't it it doesn't work in the playoffs when the game slows down like the only couple wings who've been able to do it over the past couple of years like you say what you want about Kyle Lowry but Kawhi want to ring with Kyle Lowry LeBron want to ring with AD but like that's the year that LeBron was playing point guard and nobody's LeBron so that's LeBron mm -hmm. um Giannis had Drew like the Celtics do now and stuff like that. So the, your forward needs to have a guard, and they have all these forwards and no real point guard, right? So that's why I think, and, and from what I've heard, they really covet double O. On top of that, DJ and double O were signed, got to give credit to Landry Fields, to two great deals, mm -hmm. cost control for the next three or four years, and that's really, you know, like appetizing to David Griffin because we know they owners trying to tell him we can't, we can't, we're not fucking with that second apron. So what they don't want to do, because in the 
because think about it like this, right? CJ's 32, 33. So you getting two or three good, more good years out of him tops. And they bet they, well, they pay yeah. him. Yeah, if they don't, if they don't get off BI for a guard that's cost controlled now, he's gonna have him by the balls next year when it's time to pay him. Because then the only real like facilitator you're gonna have is Zion. Trey Murphy's a play finisher. I mean, they they could get the Lakers pick in this draft or they could do something, but I'm not sure if that's gonna like be somebody that's gonna help them immediately. Like at the guard position, we know it takes guards some time. It's very rare that guards come in ready. Right, so, right, right. you know, I, t- I just think like you can pro- like GMs can project whatever they want. But like you said, GMs talk, owners talk, agents talk. Guys know somewhat what the situation is in, inside of most organizations. Now, there are some teams like the Heat, the Spurs to a degree that keep everything in-house consistently yeah. and they don't play these media games. And I think. I think that Landry Fields is – I think that all the reports we saw pre-deadline, I think it showed that he is willing to play the media game when it comes to uh, affect, like controlling the narrative around what his team's trying to do. And it creates creates all this discourse for us on this DJ versus Trey, you know, all that kind of stuff. But all those clicks, all that kind of stuff, that's good for the team at the end of the day. Like we live in an era where all publicity is good publicity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's if we want to give Landry credit. I I don't <laughs> think he playing the media game. I think uh, yeah, I don't think he's playing the media game because I think certain things that 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 was reported by these sources was a bunch of like bullshit. Like because the stuff that came out so like with the stuff with Trey and JJ that comes out and says. They untouchable. As a GM, I would never put nothing like that out because that could ruin the chemistry within your own organization amongst the players, right? That can cause discourse amongst the players t- towards you. That could cause discourse amongst the players to where they go out there and be like, well, I ain't part of this organization anyway. I'm going to do my own thing. Or, you know, pull a, uh, <laughs> what's my guy's name? Pull a guy day, uh, the, the, uh, John Tay Porter start start taking an under on yourself. You know Crazy. what I'm saying? But um, I now, but I will say this though: if if he did play the media game, like right now with uh, whoever is the source that told Mark Stein is the Atlanta Hawk close guy, whoever. If he did that, that that that's cold. That's that's a very smart and strategic move. To get the prices raised up on Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. Now, obviously, as fans on the outside looking in, you know, we we don't we don't know what they what the front office and Quinn is really thinking when it comes to Murray and Trey Young, which moving. But you know, when I look at it, you know, okay, do I want to trade Trey Young? No, I don't want to trade him, right? Because one, you know, looking at it from a business side, he brings so much to the Atlanta Hawks organization. Uh, getting us, I mean, without him, we wouldn't have had the little what we had the little Christmas game, some shit we ain't had in like decades. You see, and I ain't ne- I never seen this many Hawk jerseys on the road, so. One thing Trey Young has done, if he ain't done nothing else, was put our team on the map market-wise, you know what I'm saying, and amongst the casuals. Now, when you talk about actually winning, now he had not won. Where does that blame go? Okay, as fans, we're looking at players and coaches, right? That's that's what you're first looking at. Then you're looking at the people who's getting the talent. Okay, why are you getting the wrong talent? So, like, I think when you so when you say stuff like um put two wings beside Trey Young, and that's what I be sitting here thinking all the time. How come the people who get paid to do this, right? Landry Fields, and this is what tripped me out. Landry Fields, Cal Corbett. They're play, they're former players, right? So 
how they don't see what's needed to be successful with whatever player you want to keep, right? So with Trey Young, why haven't they put wings? Now, I will say a wing because I'll give them credit if they say we count Jalen Johnson as one of the wings. So I will give them credit for that. What? Why have they not addressed the other wing position, even as far as saying, you know what, since we cut, uh, um, since we got rid of uh, that two-way contract, uh, when we took, what's his name, when we converted Trent Forrest. Trent Forrest to an NBA contract, why didn't they look at the market and say, this is a cheap wing that we can test, kind of test our theory on having the two wings with Trey Young instead of going to get a point guard, giving another point guard a contract. You know what I'm saying? There's no there's no cheap wing that can like simulate what the wing you need can do. Like there's no there's nobody at home that can simulate what Brandon Ingram could do. If if there was somebody at home that could simulate what Brandon Ingram could do, or even like Macau on offense could do, they'd be in the NBA right now. Okay, let me ask you this: What's a plan B after if you don't get a a BI? What's a plan B as far as wings? Who who's a who's a close or distant? Thing, okay, so the thing with Brandon Ingram is, like you said. You want to in, in the past, you want to go after disgruntled stars or stars right. who like like one man's trash is another man's treasure type of thing. That's what you want to do. You wanna you wanna buy low on an asset that fits better on your team. Right. right? We from what we've heard, the Nets are asking for the moon and stars from Mikhail Bridges. If they weren't, he'd be on the list. Right, but right, right. My issue with Mikhail is Mikel's closer to being like fit wise a number three to Trey and Jalen than he is being a number two because okay. the playmate mainly because of the playmaking mainly and also mm -hmm. like Bia's just a better player overall right um, but mainly because of the playmaking and you can't really be today you can't be a number it's real I'll just say I won't say you can't it's really hard to be a number two and under six nine and not have decent playmaking numbers and his playmaking is mainly because he has the ball all the time and he still averages like four assists and that's those numbers aren't those don't impress me um but my plan b if you don't get uh then, then it's it's it goes back to you get a wing that's above replacement level whether that's dorian finney smith or you know Fucking, I don't know. Does don't a, know uh, I mean, Kayla Mark, like, like you know, like those, those, the, the, the tier or two under for DJ or that point guard, whatever point guard you send, and picks, so that if you're not getting that player, you can get the pick, so that when that player comes available, mm -hmm. I'll have the money ready, so to speak. I have the currency ready to trade for that player, because right now, the Hawks are in this situation where it's like. Because that's why we talk about going all in all the time. Because if you attach if you attach more than one first round pick to a player this summer, you're immediately basically all in. Like no no matter what. Like unless you unless you um sell somebody like Bogey or like that's the only like that's vet the only value you really have. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only vet you I mean, outside of the two guards, that's why they have to that's why they have to get this trade right. Because at the end of the day, Bogey is a great backup too for whichever guard you keep. I don't think that's going to work long term because I think Trey and Bogey is cool, but you just got to you just got to you got to flip to defense a little bit more, just a little bit more. Like well, me, overcompensated well, in the you. past, but you got to flip a little bit more. Let me ask you this, show because I know you're I know you're a draft guy. Mm -hmm. Is there uh what about in the draft? Is there a wing in the draft? So once again. I can't even remember. Free agency in the NBA start after the draft, don't it? Yeah, it start after. Would you address? Because I know, like, I know agents and front office guys. I know they already talking about 
certain players and probably setting up top framework for trades so if certain player become available but say before then the draft comes is there a wing that the the hawks that let's say uh between let's go 10 just in case we don't make the playoffs so let's go 10 to say 15 i think that that's realistic right is yep. there a wing in that category that could help us that could address what what you're looking for from a bi type play? now obviously i know they're not gonna come in and give you all that bi type of shit immediately number two overall there. pick now we talk about number two overall pick now number two Just right but mm -hmm. he's number two overall but he got traded so, I mean, because he I got traded for Anthony Davis. I, I mean, mean, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, hey, think about what the Lakers could have had, but for um, sure. Oh my god, but <laughs> is there a wing in a draft somewhere between 10 and 15 that could fit that BI type mode? Yeah, there's there's no BI in this draft, like, Bye. there's there's no there's no BI in this draft, like, there's guys that are good that have different skills, but. No. I don't. There's, there's no. Oh man, definitely, de definitely not ten to fifteen. Like, de oh, <laughs> definitely so not ten to fifteen. You need, definitely, definitely, you had to be like top five, huh? I mean, you could, you could play through six to ten, and one of them might fall to you from six to ten. But at ten, boy, you playing dangerous game, looking for that ca caliber of player oh, with that oh, caliber. Oh, of he called it a role player draft. What's good, ticket? What's up, y'all? What's up, show? What's going on? I'm well, good. We already, How you doing, we already know what Ticket want to do. Huh? We already know who Ticket want to trade. Hey, man. J Drive Zach Edie. <laughs> hey, trade, trade. Uh, but I, I'm going I'm to play it a little bit more objective. You know, if you, you know, if you got both situations, you know, if, if you get with, if you get rid of what, let me say this. You got to get the draft right first. Because the better hey, hold up, hold up, ticket. Hold up. I got to say this, man. Go ahead. Shout out ticket being in his usual spot in the motherfucking car. Hey, I'm in Augusta. I'm working the masters. Oh, that's right. You is that's right. And he's still in the car. Mm -hmm. so get that out. Go ahead, ticket. That's ticket spot that will. <laughs> so uh we gotta get the draft right first. You know, obviously, y'all know I like Edie, but I do like what I saw out of Klingon. Uh, last night as well, so I wouldn't be mad at getting clinging at all, but I do feel like this is a more of a center led draft than any other position. Um, I wings, I don't, I don't know if you're gonna get anybody that's gonna be at least DeAndre Hunter. Oh, really? I mean, I, I'm not a, I'm not a real believer in. In any I, don't of, think, I don't even think DeAndre Hunter has lived up to being a fourth overall pick. So you saying well, I mean, I'm not even saying as far as where he was drafted. I'm just saying I don't know if any of those guys will be as good as DeAndre Hunter. Okay. I mean, I, I haven't really looked at the draft like that yet. So I'm, now I will now I guarantee that these centers. Or be better than the centers we got. Okay, so say I, we get big. What's your move with Murray and Trey? What you doing with him? Say you say you get you get say you draft Edie for some for some odd reason they get Edie. Does that change who you would move, Trey or Murray? Does that change anything? The I center mean, you pick does that change anything? I mean, I would be a fool to think that one guy doesn't fit better with the other. So, like, if you if you take Klingon. Klingon, I think, will help Trey more because he can cover on defense. He cover a lot of ground, bro. Mm -hmm. Like he can erase a lot of shit. Um, with DJ, I mean, if you keep DJ and you trade Trey, Edie's probably a better fit in my opinion because you not to you Edie isn't going to be relied upon as much to erase mistakes. Because you're not going to be as deficient at the point guard position on defense. 
Edie would really more likely have to just defend his position. He okay. would just need, he would just have to he just got to work on his lateral movement a little bit more. I don't think it got to be to Klingon's level if Murray's the starting point guard. But if you keep Trey, you got to have a motherfucker on that defensive side of the ball. At even, the- if, even if you uh even if you trade Murray and address the wing issue, you still think you need a better defensive bid? Yes, because with everybody with everybody spreading the floor, the wings are the wings are going to be less effective on the defensive side of the ball when you have to make up for Trey's mistakes. And with every with everybody doing spread pick and roll nowadays, outside of a few teams, those wings are not going to be in position to be able to help Trey. Once he gets beat, the only person gonna be able to really help is really clinging. Assuming you know you get get a clinging. What does oh, clinging do? What does, what's, I mean, what does clinging do that Clint don't do defensively? No, they're almost the same player, but clinging is seven two, but and he's a lot more. He's, he's a lot like more imagine you got to imagine Rockets Clint Capella, but seven two. Yeah, oh, he's wait, a, wait wait he's seven two. Seven yeah. two, bro. Edie had him looking like he was six nine. Well, Edie's Edie oh, has Edie. A, on the offensive side of the ball, and that that Edie's wingspan on that jump hook, like Klinger was playing that shit good, and Edie was still at times like really was real get really getting off on him. But <laughs> so you but, feel so, ticket. You feel. Even if we let's say we traded Murray, mm-hmm. and let's just say we got Brandon Ingram, you still feel we need a clinging at the center position? I mean, the defense should be solid right there, right? Or, or you, I, am I, I off think, what y'all saying? Or what, what you saying? I think that with the spacing in today's game, a wing will not complement Trey Young. As much as a center would, defensively. Yeah, de- yeah. yes, defensively. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I ain't worried about the offense. I mean, we trade. Yeah, yeah. I ain't worry about that. But I mean, yeah, man, I'm, okay. not, I'm not gonna lie. What's up, foot? I'm not gonna lie. What's up, man? Like, I I haven't seen a guy this good on defense. Like, I ain't gonna lie since Anthony Davis. What that guy you talking about? Ticket. Talking about clinging on defense. Like oh, just yeah. lateral movement, rim protection. Like he reminded me of Anthony Davis when he was at Kentucky. Now, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. You are the GM. Yeah. Which one are you trading? Trey or Murray? Or are you keeping both to see how it goes? I would trade because obviously, obviously, before you answer, let me add this caveat. Obviously, you already have to going by what you were saying about nailing the draft and mm-hmm. how certain bigs are good with certain players. Obviously, going into the draft, you already know who you're gonna move because you already know who you're gonna draft. Right? Now, yeah, so now you might have a situation where you might get stuck with the other guy. So let's, I'm going to just run it like this. Let's say you keep both, okay? Of course, I'd I'd rather Edie, but you probably going to need, but you probably going to need Klingon. Um, the benefit for with Edie is that you have somebody on the floor that won't have to rely on Trey Young's genius to score. So all the things that you, that you want Clint Capella to, that you wish Clint Capella could do, Edie could do, but in a different way. Like he can score, he can't shoot, but he can score. Does Clinton can Clinton? He got a post game. He don't got an offensive game. He's relying. On, he's a he's a role alley oop guy. Okay, so he like a Clint Capella on offense. Yeah, he, just young, young, bigger yeah. at Clint Capella. He's just younger, bigger, and faster. Okay, I don't know. About, I don't know if he's faster than Rockets Clint Capella, but you might be. You probably right about that. Yeah, and people but, forget. But so, but, so who you moving, ticket? Yeah, who you moving? Say again. Are you trading Trey Murray, or are you keeping both and running it back to see what you got? 
I ain't running the back. I would I would trade Trey. And what would be your expected return? It don't you don't have to be detailed like the exact player, but give me uh I know you're gonna pick and what type of player are you looking to return? A starter, all NBA. What are we looking at here? What's a package that interests you? Okay. Assuming I want center in the draft, I will want three first. And I will want a starting wing. Okay. That's what that's what that's what I would do. If if I'm low on the picks, I would do a I would do a first, a starting wing, and a backup point guard. All right. If if I if I go with somebody that don't got enough like draft capital. So, so are you saying, Ticket? Are you saying that Trey Young is not worth an uh, All NBA player in the trade? Uh, yeah, he is, but I just specified that we need a wing. So, so it, like if you like if you go get like a MB then, or something like that, then obviously that that's a different story. Okay. So okay, but so okay, so obviously, obviously. So, what you think about that return for Trey Young? Um, I mean, that's cool. Uh, I mean, I know you're not moving Trey, but I'm just it's saying just, it's just to. If you ain't ready to tip show, I go. You can go first foot. So what? Here's, what's up, foot? What's up? What's up? Here's my problem, right? Ain't no way in hell I'm trading Trey without getting another All NBA player back. Cause that'd be, we don't have no damn assets, right? And you're gonna be back in the same boat, right? Because look at it. So we didn't draft Luca. We did all this. Uh, the boy that came with the trade deal, he didn't work out. So we just giving up dudes. If I, I told you, I'm, we need to. We try. We should be trying to win right now, not tomorrow. Two years. Does it matter, but does it matter the position the All NBA player is? Or it depends on who we draft. You no know, goddamn guard. Well, well, I'm not even. I'm not. It's not depending on who we draft. I don't think t- for me, who we draft has no effect on who I'm getting or who I'm trading or whatever. It might for me, right? You know, I know you said you know you talked about the two centers, and I agree with you with what you were saying, but that don't that won't determine if I'm trading Trey or not, right? Uh, or, you, or, or what I'm getting. For, go ahead. Uh, go. Even if you draft one of them two centers, mm-hmm. if a get on the table, you still gonna goddamn go get in B. Oh hell yeah! Hell yeah. I, what? I hell got, yeah! Hell I got yeah! We get in B. I got, oh, I, bro, y'all already know how I feel about in B. I so get him all. I don't want to make the second round here either. I got, I got you, I got you. All right, continue, foot. My bad. Yeah, yeah, no, you talk good. No, no. Uh, so that that's my thing. So I'm not trading trade without getting a damn mother all NBA player back. Fuck a pick. I, I, I don't. Them, we, it ain't worked out for the past five years with these what, picks. So, so I'm so foot. My question to you is: mm-hmm. If an All NBA player isn't available, you're moving Murray, or you running the back with the same backcourt? You can't run it back. I'm just asking for his opinion, Joe. I'm my opinion, for that. In, in, in my opinion, <laughs> unless you get some right now, I think I can't remember who. I think Demar, you might have said it earlier. DJ is a hell of a value for us right now for what he brings. I mean, he is. Right. So, so, so unless unless I get what I want, I'm not trading. Neither one. That's how I feel about it, right? He said you got to pick one foot. I have to? Yeah, you got to. You, you, cho- you got three choices. Trade, Trey, Trade, Murray, or keep both running back. I'm trading, Trey. Even if there's not an all-NBA player available. Well, you say I don't have no choice. Because the way I'm looking at but, it, this, but, but I already know. This, let me tell you why. But you just I'm said saying. it had to be for all NBA. So I want to make sure, even if an all NBA player is not available, does that change anything? Are you well? Not, well I'm gonna say this. I, now you know you just told me to pick one without any other than other stuff, right? Uh, okay, I'm just okay. picking one. I'm telling you why I'm ahead, picking. Go okay, you're right. Why go I'm, ahead, picking. Go ahead. I'm picking Trey, not because it's play. But how DJ is fitting with this damn team right now? What I'm seeing, is some of the difference, right? The, so that's we're why. twelve and ten. 
I'm not even talking about record, bro. I'm talking about how this team's playing. What so you talking always... about? Are you trading all NBA player off vibes? No, 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 no. He didn't give me a chance. He told me to pick one. God, all right. Man. He told me to pick one. I'm trading him. I'm trading him based off what I'll see on the floor. Said, and this oh, team God. rallying around DJ. I said vibes. Whatever you want to call it, the play of this team is much has been much better. We're twelve and ten. How does that constitute much better, Matt? Matt. So, oh, so now you don't care about record. Hey, hey, let's, record don't care about no, record. Let me finish, Matt. Let me tell you why, <laughs> Matt. Here's my thing, right? I told y'all last year, beginning of the season, what I want to see more: uh, ball, I, ball movement, player movement, and energy and effort on defense. Right? That Matt used to clown me about the energy and effort. That started equate to wins of this team playing better. See, Trey's so good that where I think that sometimes he he had a, a team hand strap because of his play. This is this is not an indictment of Trey not being an all NBA player at all. I'm talking about fit right now, what I actually see on the floor. That's what I'm talking about. But you know what this sound like? What that man? This sound like the guy at the club that don't want the 10 because he worried about everything that come with getting a 10. What? No. He, he'll, just, he'll take he'll, he'll just take, feel he'll, like he'll, for he'll me, take he'll take a for seven. Me. He'll take a six or seven, so no. he got to deal with the headache. Hey, for me, for me, right? I think that it's unfair to judge the Hawks without Trey and with Dejounte, without taking into account the Hawks with Trey and without Dejounte. That's just my opinion on it because I, what I know is that every time that every stretch that I've seen Trey and Bogey start together. So looks like good basketball to me. I think DJ is getting the same benefit of that. Now, Dre definitely prefers DJ to Trey, for sure. I don't give a fuck what DeAndre Hunter wants. But um, I can, like I said, I see both Wait, sides. What did you just man. say? You said Hunter does what? Hunter he likes DJ more. Everybody knows that. Over Trey. I mean, they're friends. Oh, he do? I didn't know that. My bad. They're no, friends. So I mean, what play? does that mean? I'm, I did, my bad. I'm sorry. They're friends. So. That's my first time hearing it. Yeah, yeah, not, it I mean, I, it's I, pretty. I, it's I, pretty I, obvious. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not building a team off. I'm not building a team off of vibes. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, like I'm just saying that. Like to me, like I understand um, everybody's viewpoints on trying to create the best team overall. I think that. I think that one of my biggest, my bigger issues with the trading. Uh, Trade for an all NBA player, obviously not at guard, but it'll be like at the wing or the big position. I mean, if that if that's what you if that's what you want to do, you're playing through that player nine times out of ten, and what you're diminishing the value that you get back from DJ, uh, in my opinion, that way. So you you just not you're not going to see him average like twenty five nine and whatever if you were playing through a center or a um. And you still have Jalen because you're going to lean into those two players because they're more efficient basketball players. Now DJ will do a good job of setting setting those guys up. He'll do a decent good job of setting those guys up. But what we have also seen, especially as of late, that when it comes to making like advanced reads, DJ is not the most proficient at that. And he does play a safe. That's why he's a um, turnover and risk reverse. And there's pros to that. But um. You know, I just, I just feel like, see, it like you, you're trying to win a championship, right? And if you're trying to win a championship, and you have at least one, it, regardless of whichever point guard you believe in, you believe in one of them, right? And as an organization, you at least are optimistic slash believe in what JJ can bring. You need to be adding. We don't need to be selling anymore. Like I've been saying, like, if you, that's why we were saying, if you were trying to sell DJ for picks to buy in the summer, that makes sense. At the end of the day, you should still be building and not trying to break anything down. So the only real question is, what are you selling to buy with? What are you, what are you selling to buy with? Well, for me. so what's the, so I missed it earlier. What, did anybody go over a window? Damon, what's the window? Uh, the main question is who you, who would you trade and, or what? Uh, well, it depends. It depends what window I'm looking at. Cause, uh, well, I mean, for me, it, it doesn't. This but, summer, just, yeah, this, this summer, man. Who you trading, Trey or Dejounte? This summer, and why? I'm trading Dejounte. It's not even a question. 
One, because if I say, okay, I'm looking at a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, I'm going with the younger player. That's I'm looking at winning next season. I'm saying I'm going with the I'm going with the younger player who hasn't entered into his prime yet next season because I can make let's just say if I if I'm building a team around Trey and I might make a mistake or whatever building the, the right team around Trey I have more room for error with a younger player than I do with a guy who's already 28 right this summer 28 so will be 28 next year. Well, but, hey, man, are you trying to win now? Are you trying to matter, go? But I don't – it does matter Matt, because – it Matt, does matter because – Matt, listen to me. We talking about winning next year. It matters okay? because, It matters because I've already seen what DJ can – I've already seen what D, what type of – I've already seen what DJ can do as the point guard of a team. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's, it's, right. It's, it's 64 and 168. I already know that. That's That's chalk. Is what now? Hold up, but what's, what's, what's wait, Trey? Say that again. What's sixty four and sixty eight? That was his record. The two years. No, 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 no. What's his record? record? It, what What's his record in Atlanta with the players that you have? I'm I don't not, care about San Antonio. Throw that out the I'm, window. I, Demond, I can't. Demond, you I can't, can't because you got a twenty two game sample. Matt, you not Matt. Hey, a twenty two game sample. A twenty two game sample. Twenty two game sample got the Nets thinking they gonna build around Mikael Bridges. Exactly, that was saying. dumb. That no, was no, 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 no. You can't no, piece no, no. me. You can't. You can't. All I'm saying is that if I bring up Trey, he got a bigger sample size with the Hawks. Matt, all I'm and saying is this. Under 500. But, 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 but Gerald, but, but Gerald, Matt, since, but Gerald, Matt, since Matt they, listen Gerald, to me, they, listen to Gerald, me. since they stopped tanking, since they stopped openly tanking. No, they no, you no, no, they, they have no winning record with yeah. Trey Young. No, Matt, you just did his whole career. They have a winning record. They have whole career. Hey, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, guys, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. We are listen. This this my opinion right here, Matt. I don't care about what this player did or sound. I don't care about that. But the, and the reason matters. I say that is this: the reason I say that is because I'm I'm concerned and worried and getting my and and developing my opinions about what this player can do with the players he's going to be playing with. I don't care what he did with. So, with Demond, you bring awesome. up. Now I understand you, you are you you're going to trade you Murray. Up, you bring up Quinn Snyder's playoff record, but now it doesn't matter. Okay, I got you. All right, even if I use even if I use his time, you want Atlanta, me to bring up Quinn Snyder's record in Atlanta? You want to bring up his no, playoff record in Atlanta? It's the same. You bring, you, up, you, you bring up history. I'm not going go, to go let you get me off topic today, Matt. Nice. But friend. listen, but listen, I'm not. I'm I'm not even, Demond, I can't. I can't piecemeal. Five games here, fifteen games here, three games here. I can't piecemeal that together and say this is what Dejounte is. Minus you don't. Trey. You don't. You got twenty-two straight games. Actually, got twenty-five straight games. But if I look at but the mind, I look at the numbers. Oh, overall, we're twelve and ten. That that's that, that's not okay. good. That's not great, right? That it's doesn't not. that doesn't give me a lot of confidence. The that's offense is taking great. the, the off, great. The offense is taking the number. But again, you talk about the record with Trey. It's not just with Trey. Okay, you listen, listen, like the, listen. John, Dejounte Murray played in those twenty in that twenty four and thirty two record that y'all keep quoting. Dejounte Murray played That's in those true. games. That's true. Played in those games. Hold on, 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 y'all, hold on, hold on, hold on. Been all season, guys. The team <laughs> is at its worst when both of those guys are on the floor together. Exactly. Go ahead, go ahead Matt. Finish your finish your point, Matt. Then we're gonna go to uh, RJ. All right. So so y'all I keep I saying. I thought oh, I my bad. I forgot you was up here. Uh, where you go? Where, uh, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. I'm right here. There you go. He's right in the middle. I can't. I missed him. All right, Kool Aid. So, uh, then RJ, I'm, go ahead, Matt. Stop. So, I, it's a, it's, it's annoying when everybody. Trey was twenty four and thirty two. That's, that's stupid because Dejounte Murray played with him. Bogey played with him. Capella played with him. So, I mean, we're not including those guys in that sum of record, right? And the fact that the two starting wings missed. A majority of missed twenty three consecutive games or twenty two okay, consecutive Matt. games. So my, my last question, nine and fourteen Matt. when those two guys were out together. Hey Matt, what? my question to you is this, Matt. My follow on question to you is this: What is a realistic return for Dejounte Murray? If it's for me, yeah, for you, you the GM. What's a realistic return that you that you're looking for for Murray? I would take back. A point guard, a backup point guard, a wing player, and picks. So, like for instance, 
like I was telling um, Leon a couple weeks ago, like uh, Malcolm Brogdon, Matisse Steibel, and in uh, the top pick, I, that's that's fine for DJ. Absolutely, absolutely. Hell because no. I so fixed, two so two I role fixed, players and a pick. Two role, if you want two role players in the top, um, in the top five pick or top top seven pick, you whatever get, that. Pick you know, you ain't getting no top five pick. Well, I'm just saying, Portland. I'm just saying, you Portland probably would be. They already have two picks, so you probably would have to give our own in that deal. So it will be us moving up nine spots, not necessarily us. Uh, right? Am I right, Matt? Well, yeah, but I'll, I'll, if that's the case, then I would need a future pick. That nigga drunk. That's what I. That's why I said realistic. But you know, Matt. Be, because you know, okay, Matt because, be because if I trade, well. if I let's say I trade Dejounte Murray in number eleven, whatever, right? And I get. But back, it's like, why would they trade for? And I get. Ahead, and, I, and I and I get back, like I said, Malcolm Brogdon, Matisse Thybul, and three. Hell no! I would still need. No, I would still need a future pick. It don't have to be well, top, let me go like this. protected or whatever. Matt, let but me ask you are, again. I, those are the two picks that I need. Matt, let me let me ask you again, and I'm a, I'm gonna set the the parameters. Okay. Okay. One what one starter and mm -hmm. two picks is that a realistic return for Murray? A starter and two picks. Well, what what are the picks? No, well, I'm about to ask you, what are you looking for? But that's the parameters. You can get one starter, two picks. What, yeah, I think that's. What, I think, what I would think, you take? I think that's more. Than, I think that's more than fair. Um, okay, now do do the picks? The picks can be what lottery protected? Yeah, as long as they're first. As long as Adam Silver is calling the name, that's that's fine. Okay, because my last like, question. I'm likely I'm likely not to use either of those picks anyway. So okay, I need so. The, but I need the picks to regain the assets so I can package together to get. More players or okay. better players that fit. Okay, let me ask you this. If we wouldn't use so, the pits, why would so they be valued? Hold, hold up. Because what I might hold up, 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 hold up. So Matt, so two first. Now the starter in return. What position are you looking for? Well, if it's the starter, then it would be a wing player. So a wing starter and two first lottery protected is a reasonable return for Dejounte Murray. Yeah, I mean it's not going to okay. happen, Demond. But I would like, for instance, well, if I let, like, right? I got you. I got you. I'm just, I'm just try, trying, trying like, to get yeah, like, was, like, like Cam, Cam Whitmore and. I mean, and yeah, you don't have to get a player, but I'm just saying. So you okay, would address somebody, the something, wing, something like that. Cam Whitmore, you would address the wing and like two that. first. Okay. Right. Yeah. Kool Aid. Yo, Trey, Trey or Murray, who you moving and why? Let me or you, tell you. Are you keeping both? Well, now. You, that was my you, you, didn't, you, didn't give, you didn't give a foot that, that, that he yeah, said. Yeah, I did. I said, said we'll keep both. Trey Murray, but he, or you going to run back for That's exactly both. what I told foot. That's exactly yeah, but what I told. Yeah, he'll keep both, though. Foot did say he'll keep both. He, I'm, he, I'm he, asking, no, that's right. You had a follow-up question. My bad. You didn't have a follow-up question. Yeah. Trey, Murray, uh, Murray. Trade or keep both. What which one would you do? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, if I want to win now, I'm gonna do it itself with what Jeff T said he would do. What's that? I would keep Trey. Mm -hmm. I'll go get me a stretch big center that mm -hmm. can shoot and stretch, and I would and I would go and I would, I would take the young boys around him like Mo G. Let him to practice get in there so he'd be a stretch big shooter and play defense. I will mm -hmm. pull up Miles Norris, another 10, 16 guy who's a stretch shooter, another stretch shooter. And I would take self blinding. I would trade, I would trade Bogey with DJ. And, and, and now let me let me say this about DJ. Let me tell you about this about DJ. Because we already got uh, DJ was with Trey Young who was first drafted by Travis. Okay. So y'all getting feedback? I just no, need go to ahead. Know. You good yeah. now? You good? Go ahead. Okay. So 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 you know JJ was already was was drafted by Travis to be paired with 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 Trey. So he would be a stretch big, also a stretch a stretch guy. Cool. And I'll be athletic and guy to help Trey take off the take take Trey off off the dribble <laughs> coming up the court. So let me ask you this, Kool-Aid. So let me ask you this. Let me give you the follow-ups like I've been given. 
Okay. So you so you would get Murray. You would trade would you trade Murray to acquire the stretch big? Yeah, I would I, if I if, now if I if I would if that's what I would do, I would trade Murray if I could get a stretch big for from any team that could that is a stretch big. So y'all talking about y'all I would trade hey if 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 I could trade him to get any stretch big, even if I could trade him to go get go get Bobo, I would I would trade him to get a stretch big. I would uh, <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? Cause, cause the thing he's not a stretch big though. He's he's a seven foot two three point shooter. Who are you talking about? Bobo. Oh, I thought you said Bobo. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. You would Bobo. trade Murray for Bobo? Cause I'm trying to put the team together that gonna come together that's gonna win. It's not about players. It's about what's I mean, the fit. I, like y'all said, I mean, don't I'm get me wrong. Like, like, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I get your point. I get your point. I get your point. I get your point. I get my point. I think we because should. we still got Bruno, right? We still got Bruno, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we probably not gonna get Bobo, but I understand you would get a stretch well, big. Saying, I understand. understand, what you're saying. understand. The reason I'm saying is because. When we were finna trade Murray at mid mid deadline, the Lakers didn't think he was was more valuable than Reeves. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. If if the Hawks if the Hawks wanted Reeves, and they said we'll give we'll we would give D'Lo, so the Hawks didn't want D'Lo instead of Reeves. Now they were gonna do a three way trade. Three way trade was coming with the net. So they, so they, so then the Nets didn't see that there was no value to make that trade, that three-way trade, because the only person on the Nets was, was that was willing to give up was Dick Witty. So okay. when it happened, when it did nothing, then go down. Guess who ended up with Dick Witty? The Lakers. You see what I'm saying? So that's why. So my, my thing is, is that is that DJ showing himself now a little bit too late. He'll Johnny B lately right now. Okay. Showing his showing his wins just right. to try to get himself in a spot to get put on a, to, to get picked up for something to look good for the up, up, upgrade his draft. But okay. my point is that I don't think DJ has the ability to get us to an early to a championship quicker than Trey would if you built around him the way Jeff T said build around him. A catch shooter, catch shooters. And a stretch big that can score, that can shoot okay. three and post up and play defense. Exactly right. what they're trying to match him with as a duel. All the professionals in professional basketball is saying, put Trey with Wimby because he's a stretch big shooter and a defender. All right, let me go to uh, let me go to RJ, man. Talk to me, RJ. Hey, hey, man, what's happening with y'all? Y'all can no hear me okay? time, no see, man. Quite, you see what the question is, man. Are you moving Trey Murray or are you going to run it back? Did you see the article by any chance? I didn't get a chance to see the article, but I have heard uh, people talking about it on uh, online and everything like that. But I haven't had okay. a chance to really read it myself. All right, well, what's up? What, what's, what's your opinion? Hear my thoughts on it, man, because I know they've been talking a lot about this on 92.9 The Game. Man, listen, I'm not trading Trey Young, bro. I'm not doing it because, okay. first of all, let me tell you something. If you're trading Trey Young, mm -hmm. you have to get a star back for him. You, you trade a star to get a star. Point blank, period. You don't trade him for picks. You give me a star back. I agree. You, you 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 know, I don't agree with just trading a guy just to trade a guy. But if it was up to me, I would keep both of the guys and make it work, man. I mean, how you going to make it work? The, num well, the numbers say, the numbers say they work amazing separate. Every single Hawks lineup that doesn't involve both of them is good. The only ones that suck are the ones that involve both of them. Right. And I think that's because of, uh, and the reason why I say, the reason why I say keep both of them, man, I feel like what you can do with, I feel like you can, you can add other pieces to that, to the three and to the four and uh, it, preferably at the five. I still think the five is where the team really needs to upgrade the position at. 
Mm -hmm. But like I said again, now I'm not opposed to trading DeJounte. I wouldn't trade Trey though. I wouldn't trade him. Trey would be off the table for me. But if I did trade DeJounte again, man, you have to really think about like what it, what are you getting in return? Because I'm with foot, man. I don't want no more young picks, man. Young draft mm -hmm. picks don't do it for me, dog. I don't want no young picks, man. I want okay. I want some vets in here that can play ball and that can elevate the talent we already have. Because let me tell you something, man, the Hawks have talent. That's why we get so frustrated when we watch them. The team has talent, bro. You got, I agree. You got Jalen Johnson, who I believe is an up-and-coming star in the league. He's not a star right now, but I think he's up-and-coming. You know, DeAndre Hunter has shown what he can be when he's healthy. And I and y'all know me, I've been killing DeAndre Hunter. But you know, he's shown what he can be when he is healthy. You know, and it's some and, and man, I'm I gotta tell you, I like what the kid Kobe Buffkin is showing. Okay. I like I like what I'm seeing from the um development down in the G League. Vic Kirchie, he seems like he's taking a step in the right direction. So well, let me I ask you this, RJ. Let uh, me ask yeah. you this. Yeah. Since you said you would keep both. Right. How do you make it work? What? Uh, let me add this. Let me mm. add this. We do know when they both play together, but mm -hmm. when they both play together, right? the defense is awful. You're giving up 120-some points a game. Mm-hmm. How do you fix it to make it successful that you have a backcourt of Trey and uh, Murray? Well, I'm here's my question too. When he finished, yeah, here's my thing with it, man. To me, defense is net. When I watch basketball, and I'm just speaking from my personal experience, man, defense to me has always been a want to mentality. You know, I never thought of, like, don't get me wrong, you have guys in the league that are phenomenal defensive players, but to me, defense is a want to, man. And in order for the defense to get better, I think Quinn needs to have somebody on the staff who's more defensive-minded that can bring out the best in these guys. Because here's my thing with Trey, man. I know we down him on his defense and everything, but I'm going to tell you, his offensive output, it – it outweighs what he does defensively, his deficiencies in defense, man. His offensive output is incredible, man. But does, it doesn't make it do, it doesn't make up on the defense. He's not efficient. Man. He's not efficient. If because RJ, efficient. RJ, the reason I say that if 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 it made up for the defensive on the defensive end, we you know you get we we wouldn't be under well, five hundred. Well, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I do agree with that. But my thing is this, though, man. The way I see you can make it work, because I want to get, I want to get to the point. The way I see you can make it work is, I think if you had better play, and it's not to downplay Clint, because I actually do like Clint, but I think you need, but you can tell he's lost the step. I think they need a little. I think they need better play at the five. And I think with that better play at the five, you can increase the um, the block shots and the rebounding. So if we're increasing our block shots and increasing our rebounding, I think that in turn can help the defense because that's one of that's been one of our issues where we've kind of getting we're, we have gotten dominated a lot of games when we're not rebounding, especially on the offensive side of the ball, but. Like I said, man, you know, if I had to let one guy go to make it work, because I do understand they don't work together. I think it, mm -hmm. I think with the I, I don't know if Quinn's the guy that can do it. If Quinn says he can't do it, then hey, you you get rid of DJ over uh you let you trade DJ. But like I said, I don't get I, I just wanted to be known, man. You don't get rid of guys for nothing. Okay, you once again. And Thank let you. me ask you this like I've asked everybody else. Mm -hmm. What is a fair return? You are the GM, so this right. this is your opinion. Mm -hmm. What is a fair return for DJ? And player wise, mm -hmm. what position are you addressing in the trade? If I think what a fair trade for DJ, I would be looking so more as because for all intents and purposes, whether we agree with it or not, they they the Hawks believe on Yeka is their starter for the future at the center, so. That that's just the Hawks, but uh, I think for me, I would probably you definitely would have to get a veteran um, shooting guard. Uh, mm -hmm. Who would it be? I I couldn't really say, man, because it's hard for me to deal and what else because this is a time of year where you don't know 
what guys are going to be released or what guys are that can even be traded right now. So for me, you would have to look for maybe a, a plus size shooting guard, maybe somebody running about. I would probably because you you're already running a, a small so, guy. So so you so you address you would address the shooting guard position, right? Right. Even I would you have six five Kobe Buffkin already. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Um, like I said, I like Buffkin's play, but if you're talking about winning right now, I think you need to address that. All right. What's up, Let me, let me, no, let me, let me say this something. real quick before I forget the mind. Let me say this real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead, Foot. Um, here's the thing. How you make it work? We've already seen the formula. I told y'all for Trey going to need to fall in line, right, when he comes back. He's going to need to fall in line what's happening with this whole team from the ball movement, people movement, and the defense. That's just the bottom line. This team has already showed you that they, this is a totally different looking team. And I'm not saying it's Trey's fault. Let me get that. Let me make sure everybody understands that. But I've been saying this shit all year, ball movement, people movement, and energy effort on defense. When they did that, what happened? We start winning. Am I lying? So he, lying. he just need to fall fall in place with whatever's going on. He don't have to be the damn guy to take a, a, a lot of shots. Play, play, within, play within the game is what I would like to see from Trey. And I said this before he got hurt. Sometimes he don't play within the game, right? Most, you don't. Playing, playing the moment, right? I'm not denying what he's capable of doing, but sometimes play in the moment. You see this damn team is so different when they do that. So it can work. So Foot, somebody has to make a damn decision. And, and Foot, I'm going to be honest, man. I do agree with you on that. Playing within the game also means relying on guys that have the hot hand. I think a lot of times. Thank you. I think a lot of times we watch these games, man, and it's just like, yo, this dude is, this dude is cooking. Feed him. Feed him. Exactly. There you go. And so, you know, I, I do agree with that, man. And and I do think and 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 listen, man, let it be known, man. It's something else when you right. sit on the sideline and you see these boys balling without you. I was going in next. He he see I, I, I want to say this, guy. I want to say this. Trey Young, when Travis came here, his decision was to build around Trey Young. In three years of that building, the way he was building it before it started getting demolished. He got us to the Eastern Conference Finals. Trey Young was a was a uh, All Star first year, second year, All Star starter, third year. He could have came. I heard the year we went to the Eastern Conference Final, he turned down the reserve spot. He could have been an All Star that year. This year, he's another All Star. And that third year, he also either that second or that that second or that third that second year. He also ended up being third team all NBA. So when Travis had the mindset to build around Trey, he got us to an Eastern Conference final. I don't care about nothing but a tie. Nothing but let, a tie. Let me ask you something, Kool-Aid. Did that equate to wins? No, it did not. Right? We can he can be all NBA, all this other stuff. We were not winning, right? So, and that's not so uh, that's all well and good. We went to the Eastern Conference Finals, so. though. Okay, we ain't done that since then. My whole point is. We've been stagnant the last few years, right? So, hey, kudos to him for his accomplishment. My whole point, we're not, that doesn't equate to wins for us and being a successful team. That, they stop that's building trade, around that's trade. They, but, 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 but listen, this is what listen, I'm saying. Listen. You're not finished. Let me, let me hey, finish. Hey, hey, Kool-Aid, hey, Kool hey, Kool hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all, hold on, y'all. White let's Mike, get, let's get, up, uh, Let's get White Mike going real good because I only got about five minutes because I got, I got to get back to work, players. Um, what's good, White Mike? Hey, Talk it's, to me. It's hey, listen, good. don't come in here with that Bama shit, man. We talking Hawks, White Mike. I don't care about Bama nothing shit. but the tie. I, I, no I, no I, I just got back from the Final Four, but uh, I was going to say that, but let me shout out. Here, let, <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. You know I'm fucking with you. But I need that White Mike money. White Mike had the Final Four at the last year. <laughs> <Yeah, it was. laughs> let me tell you, uh, I, I'm going to give Landry Fields credit. I don't really know if he deserves it. But for the first time, I'm going to give it. That was a brilliant business move. Whoever disclosed that to Chris Stein, that was absolutely a brilliant business move. Now you sit back and you see what comes to you. And something's coming. I promise you. Now, I'm not sitting here saying I would trade Trey. Unless it it garners me a, 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 a list of people that I cannot say no to. And you say, well, that never going to happen. That's not true. 
If somebody thinks they're a Trey Young away from winning that championship, they will give up a host of shit. And that it would take a host of shit to get me to move Trey. It, 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 I'm going to move DJ before I move Trey if the offers are anywhere near similar. But if you want Trey and you want to come get him because I floated this out here and you make me one of those Rudy Gobert where I where I get an Anthony Edwards, I get a picks, I get something like that, I'm taking it. I'm taking it if, if I get blown away with an offer. So I'm going to give a shout out to Landry Fields because I killed him. I don't know if he did it or he didn't do it. But whoever did it, it was fucking brilliant. Hey, uh, hey Chad, that's what we're discussing right there. NBA rumor Trey Young or DeJounte Murray likely to be traded by the Hawks. If y'all didn't know, that article came out today by Mark Stein. Well, not by Mark Stein. Yeah, it was but they've been talking about that the whole year, man. Well, no, they haven't. You ain't never heard them say they – you never heard Trey Young name an article like or this. Or Chris or – an article Chris. like that, but it's been similar articles. They've been talking no, – No, been not, like, not, not, with not with Chris Stein's way. Not with Chris Stein's way. Mark Stein, Mike, Mike, Mark Stein, Mark Stein. Yeah, Mark Stein. Yeah, Mark Stein. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's the whole year, so. Hey, so we heard White Mike real quick. What's up? We got Black Mike. When the last time we had Black Mike and White Mike in the building at the same time? It's been a minute. <laughs> What's up, Mike? in the day. What up, what's good, what's up? Mike? I don't know if you tapped in with, but that's what's popping off right now, man. That's what we were discussing right there. And we yeah. was also discussing if would you move who who would the question is, who would you move? Would you trade Trey? Would you trade Murray? Or would you run it back with both? And whoever you would trade, what's a reasonable return that you're willing to accept for a said player? Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I mean, dang, man. All right, yeah, yeah. Like you said, it can't take forever, though. First off, I feel like, you know, I mean, y'all know me, bro. I, I've slicked on answer this all season. As far as my, my, my stance and my take, uh, man, it's going to be tough, man. Uh, so this is this is not just a quote-unquote rumor, I guess, I'm hearing. Because, I mean, we've been hearing this for a minute. So this is, like, somewhat more of a real situation. Uh, on, or... Or one of the previous. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, just it's a, a rumor. rumor. I mean, it's a rumor. I already know Trey gonna but be. If read, to but if you play read the article, play for, uh, it's it's a it's a rumor. But if you if you re read the article, the, the dude put up some. I I I what they call it. I'll summarize the, the article. Right, it said this. At the trade deadline, everybody knew we was going. We want to trade Murray, uh -huh. but when Trey got injured. And the front office is now seeing the team and how the team performed with Trey out. The team, the team went 12 and 10 in the past 22 games with Murray averaging 26 points, nine assists, and five rebounds. And now they're saying that the Hawks front office is taking a step back and looking and saying, now, now that they, they kind of caught up, they don't know which one they really want to move. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the article is basically saying. Okay. Now, what, what White Mike said, and what me and Show, what Show brought up first, uh, we was talking about before the rest of y'all came on, similar to White Mike said. Uh, okay. Show was thinking it's a, it was article pushed by either the front office, somebody agent, to get teams in a bidding war, and basically they both, they both either, clutch now. They both yeah, either, either take the best offer or like you are you already know who you want to trade, but you are just trying to get that player value up. That's where we at right now. Shout out to homeboy Marion for tapping in. All right, for sure. Um, but I, I mean, well, I guess I mean, well, I, my take then is um, I believe Trey would bring in more than what DJ would command. Um, I think that. Man, it's tough, man, because, I mean, Trey a very good player, man. It's not like Trey going to fall off where he goes. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be a whole lot of looking back, basically, or whatever. But because, um, like I said, he's, he's not going to fall off where he goes. Uh, that's not too much of the debate and everything like that. Um, it's the organization fault that we are where we are right now. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I, I, I'm leaning towards uh, keeping DJ, moving Trey, because I feel like you can get – the most back in return with Trey. I think keeping keeping Trey for me, I have to ask myself, do I think it's realistic that we will be in the finals or win 
win the finals like in the next three years. If I if I think no, then I think you need to just – I mean, it's not no build around DJ type thing. It's just that DJ would be the veteran point guard. But you have JJ, you take him up, and then ho hopefully, you know, like you said, get some players in here, and then like a, a, a top pick per se. I haven't done a lot of my research, but like say, for example, like the guy Matt wants here, and he wants him to play with like Trey or whatever. Hold the skill, on. The skill Can I get set. something real uh -huh. quick about that? There was a mock posted on Instagram where Khalil Ware went to the Hawks and he liked it. That's all. Khalil Ware liked it? Yes. Okay. All right. So, I mean, looking at Khalil's game, when I've, like, said before to make the transition to move and trade somewhat simpler – is that you're you, you have to replace this offensive ability and it being at another like lo location on the court ideally um jj continues his trajectory and then like i said I, i'm not finna like book it or something like that but just glancing at like say khalil wears like game or something like that i mean i think he's a type of guy that can go to a franchise where yeah he he gonna get stuff ran through him and stuff like that or whatever and he um you put up put up some buckets and stuff like that so I mean, you had to trust Landry them to do the right thing, of course, you know, to kind of fill this team out, though. But I think I, I lean in towards moving DJ into the rifle position at point guard. Um, and I think a lot of the fans see it, and they finally see it. I speculated before it being proof in the pudding for a lot of people, but it's like, bro, we just become a regular size team, and that helps. Like, that just helps. Like, our number one flaw a lot of times just that, like, bro, we always undersized. And, I mean, they for, for sure one of them got to go because we can't keep doing the small backcourt crap because you automatically small in two positions. And then we love to go small at least one more position in the four or five. So that's three out of five all the time. So, I mean, that's basically what I got, Sharon. I don't know if I answered fully, but. Yeah, you know, like I said, I'm leaning towards moving trade. What you got? What you got on that, uh, Marion? You heard the questions, right? Yeah, I heard the question. What's your uh, first off, on, uh, on the article, I got fake news. Uh, these are the same people that told us the DJ was traded at the deadline, and it was a for sure, and it was a for sure that somebody was traded it before the start of the season. Mark Stein didn't say that. <laughs> well, Mark Stein didn't see. say that. Let's just wait and see. Let's just wait and see because I, I think that what happens is the only reason I'm the even addressing this is because who it came from. Well, they, they need click. He need clickbait too. Everybody need clickbait. Um he, he, he not look. clicking nothing, Marion. This ain't his report. Look. He said all these niggas need clickbait. He didn't write yeah. it. He look he, that's true. He, he didn't write it, but he, he didn't write Mark it. Stein. But he, he says just, according to Mark Stein. So he just puts it out. Which me, which means I, somebody like Mark Stein, Wojanowski, Shams, what do we know? We know they all get their shit from agent and front office and players. We know that already. So if Mark Stein, somebody told Mark Stein that, let's not kid ourselves. It's like when Woj put something out. It's like when Shams, somebody told them. But when? Not like Mark Stein. They don't but just they, make up stuff. When did they tell them, though? Tomorrow, they they said them? that a long time ago. That's been a rumor a long time ago. Listen to what I'm saying. Are y'all listening? The, about the whole league. No, just, let them, Mark, just let them explain. Let them explain, guys. Let them explain. Listen, I know. I know. Mark you you got to get used to it. Just let them explain. Mark Stein, okay? Someone told him that. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not sitting here and saying whoever told him that is somebody from the Hawks. I'm saying guys like Mark Stein, Guys like Wojanowski, Sham, somebody tells them this information when they put it out. So it ain't, they just don't wake up and make it up. They get paid by teams, they get paid by agents to put out this information. That's how they make their living. So I, I'm not sitting here saying it's clickbait. Now, Marion, do you want to trade one of them? Do you want to keep both of them? What's your stance? Disregard the article. Okay. What is your opinion on the backcourt? Do you got to move one up, or can we make it work with both? What's your thoughts? And you know the follow-on question. Who, who, if you want to move one, what's a reasonable return on the player you want to trade? Oh, and what position are you going to address in that trade? All right. Um. First off, I think that we haven't had enough time with 
everybody to know exactly what's good and what's not good. My thought is that we just got a new coach. He just started coaching his system this year. We've been injured most of the year. We haven't had a full team and, and we want to make decisions off of that. I was just watching uh, somebody talk about Jimmy Butler and when Jimmy Butler was in Minnesota and how Minnesota was pulling the plug on coach after coach. And then finally they traded Jimmy Butler without really knowing they, they called him a cancer and everything else. And they didn't really know what they had. And I think that we're about to make the same mistake. We have the best player that we've had in the last 30 years. And we want to trade them for picks because did, did, we don't know what to do with them. We don't know what to do with see, them. Did y'all see uh, DJ on, on trade? Hold on, on hold on. Let him finish, Kool-Aid. Let him finish. I don't want him to get that. One more minute, Kool-Aid. Let me just get one more minute. One more minute. Okay. What I think that we ought to do is we ought to address the center position because Clint has gotten old. We ought to look at somebody like a Nick Claxton. We ought to look at somebody like a Kessler Walker. We ought to look in the draft and bring in a Kling, a Klingonin, a Klingonin to be his backup. And we ought to address our defense first. The, the, reason, why, the reason why we fail is because our defense is, is, is not that good. It's not about our offense. It's about our defense. So let's address our defense and see if we can make it work before we just start trading off players because that's what we've been doing the last three years. We've traded out, we've been trading off players, getting rid of players for picks and, and for stuff that don't help us on the on the court. Let us work on what we have, build around it, because we've never really built around Trey. Not really. We just took take players and tried to run a Golden State system. Uh, let us build and see what we got from that. Okay, so let me get this right. You are on team run it back, address the center position. Yes. Okay. Because, because, Bro, that's because, literally the only yeah, wrong yeah, answer. Nobody's yeah, answer is wrong but yeah, yours. That is the yeah, only wrong answer. For everybody, that said, <laughs> for everybody that said we need wings, I'm asking the question, what's wrong with J.J. and DeAndre? Show you want to answer that one? You're like, you, uh, uh, you got to – immediate response please um deandre hunter is a car that if you start it too much it's gonna give out on you so i need a more reliable vehicle um and i mean that's cool having them start but if you're trying to win a championship you need to have something behind them sadiq okay. bay is not going to be ready at the start of this year he's already not an athletic player so and, and people say, oh, well, ACLs, is coming. they're coming back faster. And all. all that's true. You lose something when you tear your ACL. You, it might not be that it, it no matter. You're always going to lose something. A guy that's already not that athletic coming back, I don't already don't really have a backup for. I like Moji. That's cool. I don't have an established backup for. So going into the year relying on probably – a player that really ain't played no NBA basketball on my bench, plus whatever wing you're going to get to back up Dre or start over Dre. And then you can't get Walker Kessler because you got a trade for him. And Danny Ainge is not going to come away with the trade without getting whatever the fuck he wants from you. And either it's going to be that or it's going to be what a rookie center. Centers take a long ten, Centers usually have, the tough one of the tougher times transitioning into the NBA. No, thank you. God no, God no, not not Dre. Dre Jalen's fine. Jalen's fine, but we need an upgrade on on the wing. Not like even like. That's why I'm saying you just trade DJ and Double O. You wash your hands of this Double O at the center shit and and listen. So you, Mike will tell you. So you you think it's like no? Well, if if I already told you what I think. But mm -hmm. if they kept Trey, or well, we continued on with Trey, like we would have to, I believe, like you have to go get Clinton. Like, but at you the same time, like, you feel like, like that's gonna take time. Right? Did y'all ever watch Trey and uh, Trey and ever watch Trey and DJ on the podcast when they were talking to each other? No, about I don't want to hear them niggas being buddy buddy. I know they, <laughs> friends, but they also know they can't play together. <laughs> no, like I was saying, you don't. Did you hear what no, they I say? 
Okay. I hate to sound like this, but I almost they, don't they listen. Said, they, <laughs> said, they said they understood <laughs> that, they, that they still trying to understand each other. Right. And they but still need time to, to play to say. together. And they said they both sound good. They're not going to go through a lot of injuries. And say, no, I can't play with this thing, bro. You too sure that they can't. Neither of them are going to be able to get where they want to go. If they go on a podcast and say, yeah, we homies, but we know we can't play basketball together. That way, and when they can't get a good return, they have to say it either. It's like this, right? It's like this, right? I they're not going to sit each other's hands. We got to play together. When you and your girl going through something, Y'all not going out together saying that y'all going through something. We presented a united front to the streets, okay? <laughs> okay. No, we going through some shit at home, okay? All right. No, no that, they, that, 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 that ain't got nothing to do with no girl. And thing. That's what I'm mean, that, that, that's, 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 that's a whole different thing. Okay, okay. I'll make it simple. I'll make it simple. When you're in a partnership with somebody. It's a, it's a relationship. When man. you're in a partnership with somebody and some shit's going wrong in house. You don't let your competitors and the ops know that shit's going wrong in house. You no. present a united front outside, and then and then I, you deal I, I, with those issues in house. I, I understand that, but I'm just taking what they were willing to put out. I understand that because see, I already I already had come to this thing and told y'all how 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 the NBA wanted to go down. Yeah, you did. Trey 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 is going to leave. NBA won't Trey to leave. It's just simple as that. It's, it's professional players that talk to Trey to leave. Every right. professional player that have that's talked why, said they want to Trey to leave and go and play with LA or 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 or, or, or San Antonio. Right. We know that. You know what? I just saw I just saw something said that there's a legitimate chance of that happening. A very legitimate chance of that happening. Okay, that's because that's because Wimby actually has pull in that organization. And but, there's people in that organization that don't like him because he can be cocky and overbearing. And if this summer he presses the buttons also, to make that trade. But also it came up with LeBron James. Okay, whatever. If he presses the buttons to make that trade happen, the Spurs are going to do what they have to do to attempt to make that happen. They have exactly. a bunch of picks. They have right. a bunch of young players. If you want a rebuild package, you can get a real rebuild like a competitive same thing with right now. you can get a real competitive those are the two teams the those are the two teams that is fishing for Trey right now okay we know that okay so mm -hmm. so therefore while we talking about keeping one or the other there's a really a 70 percent to an 80 percent chance where are you getting that number from we'll, 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 we'll leave where are you getting that number from huh where are you getting that number from well, I'm coming up just, with it. I'm coming with it because there's a chance that Trey may change his mind about leaving. Okay. Let's talk about this. As for the lead, let's, let's, let's talk the about what we do know. Let's talk about what we do know. We don't know if Trey wants to leave. We don't know that, right? But 80% oh, of what been going on on the other side have been showing that Trey – has the potential and wanting to leave. He has no, this. No, no. He I'm have not, a I'm not saying, but you, you just said, uh, too late. Too late. but you just said, you just said that they was on a podcast talking too about we want to build together. Late. So which one is it? I, said, I, not, I didn't say they wanted to build together. They said they were talking about why the why the, why the team did not do well. Okay. And they were what they were saying. That was they were so, saying why the team what, what did not we do well know? because they had a lot of injuries. Because the but, question but, was yeah. asked. The question was asked. But okay. it's, it's, like, it's like this. Listen, listen. It's like this. And okay. they politically answered the questions. Well, well, you know, in the podcast, they're not they're not going to say what they really feel on the podcast. We already know that, right? Right. 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 Um, I, I understand they're, the gonna, they're, not gonna, they're not going to sit there and say, "Well, you know what? If we had a better system, we would be better." They're not going to go up there and say that, right? No, no, no. They're, they're not going to say, say that. They just said there's a lot of injuries, like what your boy Mario said. They, they, injury. You know the said, problem. They said there was a lot of injuries that that really didn't give them the opportunity to look better than what they should have. Well, the funny part is that I don't know why even his homeboy even asked that question when we know the pr problem really because, starts. Because, 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 because the media the been asking the question. We know. The we know the problem. The question throughout the whole year. No, listen, listen. What I'm saying. I said I don't even know why his homeboy asked the question when the answers start with the dude, the two dudes he asking the question to. So th that's hilarious to me. That's one. Number two, okay, we don't. Trey ain't asked to leave. We don't. That's it. What do we do know? And this will trip me out. 
people believe certain reports when it fits what they, when it fits their narrative, right? That's why I keep trying to tell people, right? You can't say you believe when the article come out and say JJ and Trey untouchable, and then when an article come out <laughs> that don't agree with what you want, you say it's fake and bullshit. You either gonna agree with reports or you're not. But what do we do now? And I've said this before: Echo and Show and Echo and White Mike. I know agents, front office, and players use those guys, not the niggas who wrote the article, but the Mark Steins. What's the what's the the brother name? Chris, uh, my guy who be out on the West Coast. Chris, uh, Hollingsworth or no, the black guy. The black guy who do NBA, Chris uh Haynes. Yeah, Chris Haynes. Your Wojas, your shams. Teens feed these guys information. That's why I tell y'all, look uh, na, na, who not who reported. Who does this benefit? Who does this hurt? Exactly. Okay. So one thing I do know, a guy like Mark Stein, Mark Stein is not known for clickbaiting. He don't just put bullshit. Someone told him. Now, I will say this. Like I said earlier, I don't know how reliable the, his source is, but somebody, first of all, ain't nobody waking up just making some shit about the fucking hawk because no one cares except us, okay? But someone told him that. And all I'm saying is when, when people talk about reports, if you believe when they say, when a report come out and say, JJ and Trey is untouchable, which to me makes no sense as an organization. I would never come out and say that. But you don't believe nothing else. That don't make sense to me. But take it all with a grain of salt. But on, can I say this? I, go ahead. Go ahead, Marion. The article that you're quoting says that Mark Stein said that back in February. Back in February, we was at the trade deadline. This could have been more stuff that was about trading Trey or, or DJ at the trade deadline. And some new reporter just came along and said, well, you know, Mark Stein said back in February that one of them was going to get traded. Like, one of them the, has got to problem, get the problem, traded, the problem is that we, one we, look, at the one hit, we <laughs> look at the one hit that, that one of these reporters have, and we miss the 10,000 misses that they have. Oh, no, I don't it, miss it, none of them. Because I, re I, I read them all. I read them all. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. In February... 99% of the Hawks Twitter, all the people that I be going back and forth with, me, did no, nobody said Trey Trey Young was available or Trey Young has been brought up. No one said that. So the part where it says that the Trey Young part in February, that's news to me. All I knew was they were shopping. That was, in the, that was in the article that you that you're talking about today. It said February in February. Mark Stein said that's what. It but said. what I'm telling you is this. All I knew at the deadline was they were shopping Murray. I I didn't hear nobody say I didn't even see that report that say that trade name was even brought up in anything that didn't say. Hold up, you know what? I'm think. Hold up, I'm thinking now. I'm thinking. Did I? Look, I got you. I got you. Look. Wait, did if I? I got. If I'm, right sell, if I'm trying to if go ahead, go ahead, show. show. And I'm trying to sell one shiny toy, right? I got one shiny toy and I'm trying to and I'm trying to sell it, right? Everybody else can set the price on that one shiny toy. But when I put this other shiny toy up next to it and say, I got these two shiny toys, I mean, I'm willing to part with either of them if, you know, for the right price, that drives up the price of both of them. It's just trade value games. Right. I don't know who they want to trade. I'm not telling you that they want to trade one or the other, like which one they want to trade. I'm telling you, I would trade DJ and they're going to trade one of them because two point guards aren't working. All, again, I'm, a, I'm just going to keep saying this until y'all get it. All the lineups are fine <laughs> unless they're both on the floor together. Like, <laughs> one, of, one of them is decent. The well, only way DJ can work out is that he had to do what CP did. And, and, and over there with Curry, mm -hmm. come off the bench, CP. You have to be the bag up point guard behind Trey. Bro, they ain't necessarily working. <laughs> I mean, they all old CP, CP, all NBA chose to be a bag up guard, come off the bench. 
he did he just he was willing to sacrifice that i mean you got to understand dj wanted to be on him and they said he and i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna say it again in the podcast they came to the conclusion they said oh we we both are point guards that's what they said they looked at each other hey how would they expect we both are point guards so they looked at each other and say hey how we as two both point guards is going to coexist they looked at each other on that question in that podcast so they understand the situation about both of them being point guards so all right family 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 your boy i got to go man i got to go back to work all right bro. make that mind i already i didn't already I already extended my lunch by 50 minutes. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you do it. <laughs> hey, I, I already made my points for today. You feel me? So that's what I'm talking but, about. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, salute to everybody tapped in. We got a game tonight against the Heat. I'll be here for the post game live show. I won't be here for a watch along because my son got AAU basketball practice today. And I, I won't be back till nine, nine ish. So I'll be right back when the game ends. And we're going to get that post-game live show popping. Salute to everybody who tapped in, man. I ain't get to get the salutes going on today. Uh, this was just a last-minute show we, we threw together. Salute to everybody who tapped in on the panel. Appreciate the feedback. Make sure y'all hit that like button out of here, guys. We almost at 1,500. I looked at my watch or some shit. We almost at 1,500 subscribers. We moving on up. It's because of y'all. Remember, this is a channel for, for the fans, by the fans. If you in the chat. Don't be a stranger. Don't be scared to come up here and put put your big boy pants on. Come up here and voice your opinion. Because some of y'all, y'all y'all be popping that shit in that chat. I need to see y'all come up here. Put your face put put your face behind your comments. That's that's my little motto. I'm a holly child, old man. Real quick, round the horn. Show Kool Aid, Mike, Mary. Y'all got any last thoughts? Let's go show. And one of them niggas got to go. One of them. Kool Aid. My thing is, it already put in, put out there. I'm looking at a, a thing Keep announced. Keep it short, Kool Aid. Keep it Kool Aid. Keep it short. Oh, Trey Young will be leaving. Palinka already fishing for him. Mike, what you got? Um, I'm I'm in agreement with Show. They got to go. One of them got to go. They just not tall enough. If one of them was a six eight point guard or something, they'll yeah, I I'd be with it. But yeah, bro, they just not tall enough, man. Marion, what you got? Let's go Hawks. <laughs> Let's go hard. That's what I got. All right, we're about to get man. Peace. <laughs>